Yeah. Um, next question after those is, uh, what is the strangest slash funniest thing that happened to you at school? Now, I've been at school for most of my life, so picking out specific moments that were the funniest or the strangest would probably be incredibly difficult because my memory is not the best. Um, there are two moments, though, which are very closely related, uh, which happened when I went back when I was in sixth form, in the second year of sixth form, uh, which strike me as they were, they, were, they, were, they were particularly amusing. Now, the first one was when we had a lot of snow this one year, and I was with my politics teacher, uh, Mr. Donald, uh, who's a hilarious guy. Um, it's like the most irreverent, lazy um, bastard of a teacher there is, but he was hilarious and, uh, you know, he was very good at his job, in spite of everything else. Um, and we had him this one day, and it was snowing a lot. It had been snowing, there was a big, thick blanket of snow all outside on, like, the playground and stuff like that. Well, the former playground, because they turned our school into an academy. Um, which was an interesting experience, I must admit. I'm not a big fan of this academy program the government's got going on, but anyway. Um, um, it used to be a playground outside, but now, because it became an academy, you are not, you weren't allowed outside at all, ever, during breaks and stuff like that. Um, and so, obviously, there's, like this huge, massive like football field-sized playground outside like the main windows at the back of the school it was completely blanketed in a thick layer of snow. And at one point, during the day, a uh, somebody, somebody had managed to sneak outside and <laughs> draw in the snow with their feet or their finger or their hand or whatever the most gigantic penis you have ever fucking seen. I am not even joking. The, only re the reason we knew about it was because our teacher, Mr. Donald, he went over to the window and uh, during one of the lessons while he was speaking and then he just spontaneously burst into laughter. And we were all sort of looking at each other like, what, what the hell's he on about? Um, and he just pointed outside, and we all came out and had a look, and there was, yeah, there was this gigantic sort of scribbled uh, penis on, on this playground, the size of a fucking football field. It was absolutely gobsmacking. It was magnificent. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Jeff would have been proud. Um, could even be, have been a fan of Jeff's, for all I know. But, uh, yeah, it was... Quite hilarious. You had you kind of had to be there really just to see this thing. Um, um, there was there, right, so there was that, and there was this other time where uh, same lesson. Well, not the specific same lesson, but the same class with uh, Donald, and uh, we were doing some boring stuff. I think it was to do with the EU or whatever, and uh, some of the. Year nines, I think it were, in one of the classrooms opposite, had gone outside to build. They were learning about like uh, Delhi and India and stuff like that, and like the, the little sort of makeshift shacks and stuff that people live in out there, you know, in all poverty and that sort of thing. And uh, they were learning about that, and they'd gone outside and they'd had a bunch of little sort of makeshift building materials, and they were both all they were all told to like build little shelters, you know, like sort of like like, like you get in the shanty towns in Delhi and stuff like that. And uh, Mr. Donald, uh, when they'd gone out for break, looked out the window and was uh, t turned to us and said, uh, "Chaps, do you fancy going outside?" And we were like, um, "Well, yeah." Um, he said, "And do you fancy? Uh, you see the little shelters down there that the Unites have built?" And we're like, "Yeah." He said, uh, "Do you fancy smashing them?" And we all stood there and kind of looked at him like, "What? Are you, are you serious?" And he was like, "Yeah, absolutely. We'll go down there and we'll smash them about a bit and stuff like that and break them." And uh, we did. We went outside, we went down, and we just kicked them about. It was absolutely brilliant fucking fun. Um, ep epic waste of a lesson. Um, but we smashed them all about, and the best part is when the Neo Nines came back and were all like, all devastated, like, because all their stuff had been smashed to shit. Um, Mr. Donald, I don't know, to this day I can't really remember whether or not the, he planned it like this or not. But it amused us nonetheless. He passed it off uh, by explaining to the children how the government and the big corporations and landowners in Delhi um, will come in and demolish these shanty towns that the people live in out there um, without sort of any warning, really. Um, and they've got nowhere else to go, and they just come in and demolish them, and they, these people have no homes to go home to. 
and he passed it off by explaining it to them as this, and sort of like said, "Well, yeah, this is this is this is what we were trying to teach you, of course." Um, yes, of course, you know, like it's not at all because we just felt like smashing some stuff up. But anyway, yeah, um, that was quite funny. And uh, just as I was saying that, I remembered another thing, which happened, uh, which I remember, which was quite amusing. This again was in the second year, I think, of sixth form, and we got our new. Our new uh, principal, after the old one was kind of forced to resign or whatever, it was a bit shady, and such and such. And we were all outside for a fire drill. Like, we all had to evacuate the school for, for a drill, get outside, line up outside the school, all that kind of business. And uh, we, we did a pretty sloppy freaking job, apparently, because the new principal, he was not happy at all. The new principal Führer, um, he came outside and he did a big, um, he did a big epic angry speech at everyone and uh, we we down we were, all the sixth form actually had to line up in the tennis courts just a bit away from everyone else because there wasn't enough room and we couldn't really hear all of what he's saying it was just a lot of shouting and <laughs> we all just stood there in absolute silence it was amazing it was like a fucking parade type deal in 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 red china or something it was uh, all of us lined up there in neat ranks and everything all stood there completely silent and the guy had finished ranting and shouting and everything like that, and he finished, and he stopped. And there was just silence for a minute or two. And then this one guy in our sixth form just uh, randomly just decided, I mean, all the silence, just broke the silence and just shouted, Yeah! And started clapping and applauding. And, uh, my God, you know, you, again, you kind of had to be there, but, like, all, all hun the hundreds of us, we all just instantly burst out laughing because it was just absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's no coincidence all the sort of like bizarre, slightly stupid stuff started to happen after our school got turned into an academy. Um, we all got a bit more disobedient rather than less as a result of the academy program, which is quite the opposite, I think, of what the government actually intended. But uh, there you go. Uh, so anyway. That's all I can remember now. Um, next question. Let's have a look. Uh, when was the last time you pet a cat? Random, but I like it. And the last, the quest, the, the answer to that question is uh, the other day. Uh, we actually have a cat in this house. Uh, she doesn't really do much other than sort of sleep in a box during the day in the kitchen and go out prowling around at night. She's not one of those cats that likes to. Uh, be stroked, but when she's hungry or something, she will hover around and like walk around near your feet and stuff like that, and she will be patted on the head and stuff like that. So yeah, last time I fed her, I think a couple of days ago, um, which is not to say she she's only she was only fed a couple of days ago and she's starved since then. Um, it's just I was the only one who happened to feed her a couple of days ago. She's been fed by other people since. Um, and I last fed her a couple of days ago. I gave her a little pat on the head before giving her a food. So yeah, that is the last time I pet a cat. Uh, since you were so curious, uh, the next question is okay. I'm not sure if this is a reference to something. I don't understand really exactly. But uh, have you ever given away your secret ocelot identity? Um, sounds like a trick question to me. Um, the official answer is no. What? What? What secret ocelot identity? Identity? What are you talking about? I I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, so anyway, next question: Can you do a Russian accent? Now, comrades, if you have been watching my uh, Kaiserreich Let's Play um, on my channel, you will know that I am capable of doing a rudimentary Russian accent of sorts. Uh, however, it's not a particularly good one, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure r real Russian people actually talk like this. So, um, there it is. I can talk like this, but uh, to be perfectly honest, I will stop now to, in order not to offend uh, any Russian subscribers I happen to have watching this on my channel either right now or in the future so yes I shall stop um, although I would like to say that you have very beautiful country Russians uh, which I would very much like to visit one day um, so thank you very much for subscribing to my channel and putting up with this bullshit uh, so anyway next question um, when did you start making videos um, 
Well, you can kind of find that out for yourself, really, just by going to my first, just go, going onto my channel and hitting videos, and then just sorting all my uploaded videos by you know oldest to newest, and you know. Uh, but the answer to the question is, uh, I think, sort of early mid December last year. I think is when I uploaded my first actual proper video. Um, so that's when I started making videos. Next question. Uh, can you do an LP of Fallout 3 on New Vegas? Um, and the answer is uh, yes, some point, I think. I have both games. I do enjoy them very, very much. I'm more, slightly more partial to New Vegas than Fallout 3, but I do love them both to bits. Um, and yeah, I will probably do a Let's Play of either one of, either one of them or both. Um, in the future at some point. I don't know when, but I, I, I imagine I probably will. Um, next question, uh, which is an interesting one, uh, is, is playing a game more or less fun when you're LPing or when you're playing normally without having to talk about what you're doing all the time? Uh, which is an interesting question because I can't quite easily say yes or no to that because obviously I do it let's playing because it's fun. However, at the same time, well, it depends really, just what mood I'm in, you know, if I'm feeling particularly sociable, then yeah, I'll make a, a video, and it's it's quite fun, it's it's one of the things I like about Let's Playing is that it's a very productive thing to do, you know, I can often spend like an entire day just sat at my computer or something, if I've got nothing to do, just gaming or something like that, but I kind of, at the end of the day, I mean, it's fun, but you get this nagging feeling that you've kind of wasted your time, like you could have been doing something more productive. But when you're let's playing something, you know, that's taken away completely because you are doing something productive for other people to enjoy. You know, that's one of the things I like about it. And uh, yeah, you know, other than that, it just kind of really depends on how I'm feeling and stuff, and uh, it depends the on the game as well. You know, um, for instance, uh, I'd say stuff like maybe Oblivion is far more fun to actually let's play than it is to play normally by myself. But say. Um, a game like uh, Europe Universalis or something um, which involves lots of protracted sitting down and staring at the screen waiting for stuff to happen and not a lot doing um, that's probably more fun to just play by myself rather than try and talk through uh, Minecraft actually that would be a big offender in that regard Minecraft would be Minecraft is much more fun to play by yourself than to sit there awkwardly trying to narrate the thousandth block of stone that you've mined out of the ground and stuff like that, you know. Um, I mean, there are plenty of Minecraft videos out there on YouTube, I will admit, but I find most of them incredibly boring. But that's just personal preference, you know. So, uh, yeah, it's there's no clear-cut yes or no answer for that, really. Uh, it's just the way it is, really, for me. So, next question, number 18, I think, out of all of them. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that was number 18, right? Next one. Uh, have you ever considered doing small Let's Plays of small horror games that you can download for free, like SCP-087-B uh, or SCP-087 Containment Breach? Um, uh, the answer is no, I've not com previously considered uh, doing those uh, precisely. I've heard of them, I've seen little bits of them, uh, I've, and I've often commented how it doesn't look particularly scary, and I've been told that it, you would have to play it for yourself to understand. Um, but I certainly wouldn't rule it out. Um, horror games is not something actually I really considered I'd be doing a lot of when I made this channel. Some people do it almost ex exclusively. Um, but if there was some big demand for it, I might uh, do do it in the future. I do have a couple of other horror, horror games of my own, but, which I admittedly aren't free or uh, small. But I have Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and I have uh, I have all the Penumbra games. Uh, I'm new to the Dark Descent, I've never completed, because I was too batshit scared <laughs> to finish it all the way through. And the same goes for Penumbra, I've not got very far into that either at all. I've got like sort of a bit into the first game and that's basically it. Uh, mind you, not just because it was scary or whatever, uh, I'm not good with horror games, I'm sorry, but um, not just because it was scary, but also because um, a lot of horror games tend to double up as puzzle games. Uh, Amnesia and Penumbra are sort of, you know, big examples of that where there are lots of sort of puzzles and sort of stuff for you to do um, to complete along the way to advance through the game aside from the obvious horror bits. Um, 
and I am not, not. I'm neither any good at puzzles. I'm not very good at puzzles at all, and I'm. I don't obviously as a result do not find them incredibly fun to do. So Amnesia was a lot easier than Penumbra, but Penumbra was a big pain in the ass because it involved a lot of sort of almost point-and-click adventure-esque puzzles, which I could never quite wrap my head around. Uh, I think in the first, like the second level, second or third level of the first game, there's a bit where you have to try and restart this generator. Um, and to get all the clues to do it, you have to go off, find a bunch of different items, and at one point you even have to listen to Morse code on a radio using a little Morse code guide you find in the game to decipher the message on the radio being relayed to you through Morse code in order to be able to, you know, help with the problem and stuff like that. And that's just ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm sorry, but sitting there trying to decipher Morse code is not one of the things I want to do when I sit down and play a game, if you know what I mean. It's just, no, I'm sorry. But yeah, in terms of these little horror games like SCP, Containment Breach and whatever, um, I would not rule it out. I would not even rule out something like Amnesia or Penumbra if, if, if people really wanted to see that. See that. I would I would probably suffer through it, um, if need be, if you, if you guys enjoyed it, you know. Um, but yeah, I haven't previously planned it, um, but I wouldn't rule it out either. Um, and the uh, next question is, what kind of dog do you have? Uh, I have a... Lurcher. He's a black-haired Lurcher, as my brother actually pointed out uh, rather rudely in the comments section for the previous video. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, he's a black Lurcher who is indeed called Hector. He's a bit of an odd name for a dog, I'll admit, but it wasn't me who named him. Uh, so, yeah, he's quite a funny little dog. I might make a little video with him in, actually, at some point. Uh, so, you know, you might get a chance to see him at some point in the future, he's ever so bizarre, he has his, he has his little ways. Um, half the time I think I hate him, half the time he's the best dog, or bestest dog ever on the planet. So, you know, um, so yeah, I have a little black lurcher called Hector. Um, and a lurcher, in case you didn't know, is kind of like a sort of small greyhound, almost like a whippet, but um, they have much longer hair. Um... So yeah, he runs very, very fast, although I didn't take him out running very often, because uh, he gets too overexcited when he does, especially in the summer because it gets too hot and he'll often dehydrate himself and make himself ill, because he's, he's a bit useless like that. He, he's, he's good at making himself ill, um, he will always, he's like a goat, he'll eat almost anything, like um, usually stuff he's not even meant to. Um, it's always a challenge when you're trying to walk him down the road. Uh, to try and avoid allowing him to eat sort of random kebabs that have been on the floor all night and stuff like that, which will, you know, make him give him indigestion and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, he has a lot of problems like that. Like uh, he also has like um, eye problems, which he has got medication for. But his eyes are going all funny. He's not very old either. He's not an old dog, which is the funny thing, really. But. Um, he has lots of eye problems. We do, he does have eye drops for it, you know, a little bit of medication. But if he didn't take that, he'd probably go blind. And we don't want that. So, yeah, that's my dog. Um, so, yeah, moving on. The final question, out of all the questions that were asked, do you intend on doing any dual Let's Plays? Uh, which, you know, either or co-op at Let's Plays or, you know, just group let's play, let's play joint LPs, whatever. And the answer is actually yes. I would absolutely love to do a joint let's play with someone. Um, only problem is I have a really crap internet connection. As anyone who has ever tried to play multiplayer with me ever will probably testify. Um, my internet connection has a great, uh, great, there's a great, great little thing it loves to do where it just randomly cuts out every now and again. It just cuts out completely, no internet access, and then uh, like a minute or so later it will resume as if nothing ever happened. Um, which obviously means I, I end up getting losing the connection to multiplayer games and stuff like that, and it's a very big pain in the arse. It doesn't happen so often, actually, since I got the new router from TalkTalk, Talk, actually, to replace our old one, which went bust. Uh, but it's still kind of annoying, and my connection, obviously, I... I share with a whole bunch of other people who live here as well, so it's not the fastest in the world. It takes me a very long time as well, actually, to upload uh, videos to YouTube. A lot of people sort of ask me, oh, why don't you do longer videos, especially for Morrowind? Why don't you give us like 20 minutes a day or something like that, as opposed to 10 minute long videos? And the answer to that very simply is a 10 simple 10 minute video of Morrowind 
um, literally takes around anything between uh, an hour and a half and most days, that's, that's if I, it's a really good day and no one else is using the internet or something, but most days it will actually take me to upload that around 200 to 230 minutes to upload well over two hours, a very, very, very long time to upload videos. People probably don't realise that as well, um, how long it actually does take to upload a video to YouTube, even on a good connection sometimes. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, my connection's not brilliant, but yeah, I would absolutely love to do a um, joint Let's Play with someone at some point, you know. Um, a friend of mine, like, quote-unquote, in real life, um, has expressed interest in doing a joint, that joint Let's Play of, you know, a couple of different games, which could be quite fun. Um, I, I've already told them I'm quite open to it, but we're, all, all we're really doing it, figuring out at the minute, is just that the te technical side of things, you know, in terms of, like, recording using my different microphones and uh, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I would like to do joint Let's Plays with people. I think it's great fun to do joint Let's Plays and uh, people enjoy watching them. Um, only thing I would say is like, I, I prefer, obviously, if, it was, if I was doing a like, joint Let's Play, to do it with someone who I am already sort of familiar with, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't want to do it really with sort of just a complete stranger who like suddenly randomly asks that like, out of the blue, or oh, do you want to join, do a, a joint let's play, like I've never spoken to you before, but do you want to do one? I'd probably say, well, no, not really, because I don't know who you are. But if it's someone I was already familiar with, like I'd seen some of their videos and stuff like that beforehand, or just talked to them or whatever, and they wanted to do a let's play with me, then I'd say probably yeah. Um, we just have to organize like when to do it and sort of all the technical garbage alongside that and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there you are. Um, I wasn't initially so open to that actually when I first started, but after I've after having seen other joint let's plays and especially actually watching live streams like the one last night, where you uh, got other people playing alongside, you know, with you and stuff like that, it sounds like incredible fun. You know, I find myself sat there actually a lot a lot of the time watching these live streams. Where you've got like three people all playing a game together on a, on a live stream, and you just think, oh, I would love to join in. You know, it'd be great fun. So yeah, you know. Anyway, that is basically it. That's all the questions I have as of the date of recording. Uh, if there are any other questions between now and this being uploaded, uh, panic not. If you've got any other questions you might feel like asking, and you're thinking, oh god, well he's already done the question and answer session now, oh god, I can't ask him now, it's going to... Panic not, um, just leave your question down in the comments for like this video or you know the other one or whatever, and uh, you know if there's a lot of different questions, then I may address them all again in a future video or something. So yeah, I'm not anticipating a lot of people um, asking me a lot of questions, but there it is. In case people do want to ask me more stuff, then yeah, I, by all means go ahead and I'll address it again later or something. So yeah, anyway, that was my 500 subscribers question and answer subscriber special video. I don't know whether this will be one video I upload or whether it will be split into a bunch of different ones. I've been at this for quite a while now. But yeah, anyway, there it is. Um, I hope you enjoyed listening to me prattle on for a bit. And I will see you guys all again soon. Ciao for now.